Hello there and welcome back to Field Study, an exploration of food and the landscape. It is July here on the Isle of Wight and summer is in full swing. So today I'm going to show you some of the things that are good to forage for now in our hedgerows and field margins. Stay tuned. So if you ask lots of foragers, they'll tell you that hogweed is one of their favorite plants. And that is just purely because of its versatility. So it gives you lots of things as the year progresses all the way through the seasons. Um, from early on in the year when it gives you the lovely hogweed shoots to uh, the little florets of the flowers before they pop open. Um, they're really nice as a, a cooked vegetable. Um, and now as we progress through summer and into early autumn, we get the seeds. Now the seeds are dynamite. They are little flavor capsules. Um, and this is the chance that the plant gives you to save its flavor for the, uh, the months ahead, for the winter time. So the seeds themselves have got a beautiful green cardamom flavor when you pick them fresh and green like this. Um, and they are really, really versatile in lots and lots of dishes. And for me, hogweed seed is one of the UK's most undervalued native spices. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Now you can preserve it in lots of different ways. You can dry it out and then powder it as a spice. It's quite versatile that way. You can pickle it and then crush it down into a paste before adding it into your sort of uh, curry spice mix. Um, but the thing that I like to do with it more than anything else is use it in sweet recipes. Now just like cardamom, it is very versatile for both savory and sweet um, and you can do all sorts with it you can infuse it into a cream you can infuse it into a custard one of my favorite things to do with it is to infuse it into a cream whip the cream and then pipe it into some lovely shoe buns or shoe pastry it makes the most amazing sort of hogweed flavored cream cakes um, and also if you dry this out and infuse it into a sugar and then put that hogweed sugar over the top of it it is dynamite it is absolutely delicious one of my other favorite things to do with hogweed at this stage is infuse it into a liqueur so you take the green hogweed seeds and you steep them in an alcohol of your choice so like a, a vodka or a white rum maybe uh, get, get your hands on something nice uh, the nicer the spirit that you put it in, the nicer the, uh, the overall liqueur will be. Now to sweeten up the liqueur, what I usually do is take some of the elderflower syrup or elderflower cordial that I've made earlier on in the season and put it in the bottle with the infused vodka. Then you want to chill it down in a freezer to like almost freezing. It's got to be super cold um, and it is beautiful at like a dinner party on a hot August night, finishing off the evening with a lovely shot or two of ice cold cardamom and elderflower vodka. Sounds good, right? Now this is a member of the carrot family, so it comes with the usual warning that it is not for beginner foragers. So the carrot family or the APACA family um, have got lots of delicious edible species in, but they also have some of the most toxic plants in the UK. Um, so first be confident that you can identify the toxic members of this family before you branch out into getting to know the delicious edible ones. Um, and certainly don't go and just pick seeds from plants which have white flower umbels like this because you could get yourself into all sorts of uh, difficulties. If you want to know more about identifying hogweed, I will put a link up in the corner wherever it is um, and I'll also leave some resources down in the description below. going to shout at me in the comments you've got Lyme's disease you shouldn't be squatting down in long grass <laughs> um, so this here this beautiful rust red color um, is the the sort of flowers and seeds of dock so this is curly leaf dock I believe now just like the rest of the plant these seeds are edible now the flavor isn't going to blow you away but what these are very very good for is drying out grinding up and turning into flour that flour is highly nutritious uh, so rumex the species that has um, the the docks in and also sorrel 
etc is also the same family as buckwheat now we buy buckwheat flour in the supermarket very posh supermarkets um, stock buckwheat flour but yeah buckwheat flour is good to add into your baking because it is very very nutritious so you could make something similar using this but doesn't it look pretty it's really really strange on the field margins you get these sort of like iron oxide um, red fringes that look like it's gone rusty near the hedgerows and it's these but when you look a little bit closer that seed as it forms in the middle is the most bright vivid magenta um, they're really really beautiful if you get up close and if you've got a hand lens or anything like that magnifying glass whatever uh, yeah just get in really really close and look at those seeds they are fantastic uh, they're sort of like winged um, but yes anyway enough plant geekery so I want to take this opportunity to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to uh, everyone that gave me messages of support um, last week when I announced that I had been diagnosed with Lyme's disease. Um, so many of you out there were checking in to see if I was okay, um, offering your stories about your experiences with it and uh, just trying to keep me informed of all of the, the different sort of thinking that there is about the disease out there and uh, I know that that all came from the right place and I want to say thank you. Um, so just to let you know, I'm absolutely fine. Uh, there are a few days where I was a bit rough with the antibiotics, but I am three days away from completing my 17 day course of azithromycin. Um, and it hasn't been easy, but it could have been worse. Uh, so yes, I'll be very happy to be off of the antibiotics. Um, and then I'm gonna request a blood test to uh, test if I've got any of the disease still lingering in my body. Um, and then hopefully it would have cleared up completely and I can get back to doing what I do best, which is being outside, making videos for you, pushing myself physically um, and all of that good stuff. But yeah, I wanna say thank you. It means a lot to me that there is a community out there that cares um, and that cares for one another. So many of you guys were supporting each other in the comments as well. That was a beautiful thing to see. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really nice to be part of it. So once again, thank you. And I mean it. Um, it's people like you that keeps me doing things like this. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. We're going to have to pop out the foragers squat for this one. <laughs> so this is broadleaf plantain and it is an excellent edible and medicinal plant. Oh, sit down, shall we? It's been a long old day. So this plant grows absolutely everywhere. So this is something that you'll be able to find whether you're looking in a city park or if you're out here in the middle of nowhere like I am, uh, you will be able to find this. And it is beautiful and surprisingly delicious. So many plants in the wild seem to be like a hard sell to people. Uh, but this one is surprising as soon as you bite into it. It tastes a bit like mushrooms, uh, like shop-bought mushrooms, like button mushrooms. Um, but also, depending on the plant that you're picking from, there is subtle variation. Now, this one's a little bit bitter. If you get them a little bit smaller, they are very, very sweet. And they have an aftertaste that is almost reminiscent of uh, walnuts. You know when you get the sweetness of the walnut and then that slight little bit of bitterness at the back of the tongue? And it is beautiful. And you can usually pick quite a lot from any one area. Chuck it in a stir fry or get a nice bit of white fish and put it on a bed of these little plantain spears. It will look so fancy and taste pretty good too. Um, and I read somewhere that if you eat this every day, you start to sort of sweat out a chemical, which is a mosquito repellent. Um, but I just, I'm not disciplined enough to eat something every single day of my life. Um, I guess I should really just for a scientific experiment. I wonder what the chemical is that they're talking about. Um, and I would absolutely love it if uh, mosquitoes didn't bite me because this year they have absolutely gone to town on me. See, that's a beautiful young plantain shoot. And it is soft, it's tender. It is a little bit furry, but not too much. Whereas this bad boy would be quite woody. You could still cook it down as a steamed vegetable. He started to go a little bit past his best at the edge. Um, but yeah. Look at those fibers off the leaf. 
I wonder if I can make string out of them. Right. Two seconds. Just trying something. Oh, that's beautiful. It is worth saying that only eat the flower spikes when they are sort of closed up and green and look like a vegetable. Uh, when they are open up, or flowered or gone to seed, they tend to dry the mouth out. It's a little bit like eating, I don't know, sand. Um, sawdust, that's probably the best way that I can describe it. So yes, it's not the best. Um, so these are the fibres that I just pulled out of that plantain leaf. Um, and yeah, I'm just twisting it into a rudimentary cordage. I am currently working on a video um, of how to make cordage out of many different plants. Uh, but yes, this is just an experiment. So I literally just pulled these out of the back of the leaf and they are twisting up quite nicely. I'll have to see how it dries. So yeah, that's as much string as you get from one leaf of uh, broadleaf planting. That's actually pretty good, to be honest. I don't know if it'll be very strong, but it's very pretty. Look at that. Beautiful bit of string. So one of my many culinary obsessions is trying to preserve the, uh, the smell and the flavour of these coastal wildflower meadows into something that you can eat and drink. And I think I might have done it. Last year I was playing with a, a sort of tea mixture um, which incorporated uh, a malt syrup, barley straw and lots of the things that are out and about at this time of year. Um, so there's a lot of wild chamomiles out at this time of year. You've got things like pineapple weed um, and lots of chamomile that sort of fringes the edges of the, the cereal fields around here. And to me that sort of honeyed chamomile smell sort of I don't know, evokes memories of, of being a child here on like hot August days. Um, so there's plenty of stuff that can be used in a tea mixture like that. Uh, one of my favourite things at the moment to put in it is ladies bed straw and there's plenty of that about at the moment. It's one of the things that I recommend doing. It, uh, it sort of conjures up a, a way of thinking about food that we don't necessarily uh, think about on a day-to-day -day basis and that is trying to evoke a sense of landscape in a single thing that you eat or drink so um maybe one of these days i'll show you the recipe uh, and you guys can go out and try it for yourself and make improvements um, all of these things are subjective but but for me, the flavour of that tea that I make sort of brings to mind um, the start of the summer holidays when we used to have a barn dance in one of the barns here um, and like long summer nights spent walking around the, uh, the edges of the, the village and the smell, of the, um, the smell of the wheat and the barley as the mist rolls in. It's a beautiful thing, almost soporific. Is knelt on a bramble and again now that's a thistle bramble then thistle brilliant so next up is this beautiful white flower that i've got all around me here now this is yarrow which is an incredible medicinal and edible plant yet again um, it is amazing for wounds and cuts um, again you can make a poultice out of it it is antimicrobial so it can stop infections etc and is also a styptic sometimes the the leaves can be a little bit bitter but that bittering and that astringency has been used in beer making um, in medieval times in order to make beers last long. Now hops, when they were introduced into the brewing process, they became very, very fashionable. Now all beers are sort of bittered with hops. But previous to that, um, we used to bitter our ales and beers and fermented drinks, our alcoholic beverages, with lots of different bitter things because bitter foods last longer but even as a herb i don't think this should be overlooked um, it's got a subtle flavor that is herbaceous it's almost like someone has uh, like wafted wild marjoram somewhere near you um, i really really like it it is really really good in salads especially when you get the young leaves earlier on in the year the young leaves are good in a salad in my opinion 
There are so many insects in this field. I've been sort of running around for about 20 minutes trying to catch a cricket to show you guys. But they're a little bit camera shy, as you can imagine. But yes, lots of pollinating insects out and about at the moment. Loads of hoverflies, butterflies, uh, moths, loads of good stuff. So there we go. Thank you very much for joining me on another field study adventure. Um, if you want to support the channel in any way, there is a merch shelf below this video with t-shirts and foraging bags and all that good stuff. Uh, hit like if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe for more foraging videos from this beautiful landscape. Until next week, take care. Uh,